I won't visit Africa until Buhari leaves power. Hello, my wonderful people. You'll be shocked and surprised who is saying this. But to a large extent, you won't blame him. A lot has happened and it has proven beyond reasonable doubt it is better he keeps away. We all know what happened when Onandi Kano, who has been out of Nigeria for some time now, came to Africa, talking about Kenya precisely, and how he was kidnapped, yeah, nabbed, and how he was treated. These are clear indications that if you are not with this government in terms of what they, if you speak against them, then you become a soft target. And if you're out of this country, you have some, if you're out of this country and out of Africa, then you have some leverage. But once you come back into Africa, uh, you'll be surprised. For instance, why is Sunday Boho still in custody? What is causing the investigation to take this long? You know, the African connection. Please don't forget to give us a thumbs up, subscribe if this is your first time. Let's get all the details. I won't visit Africa until Buhari leaves power. Human rights activist and former presidential aide Runo Mokri has vowed not to set foot on African soil until President Muhammad Buhari leaves power in 2023. Runo Mokri stated this after some pro-Buhari supporters allegedly attacked him in New York after leading a protest to the United Nations General Assembly while President Muhammad Buhari was addressing the high-level section on Friday. According to him, the group tailed him to a hotel where he was lodged and attacked him. The former media aide to former president Goodluck Ebele Jonathan said, the current administration may be planning to give him the Unandi Kano's treatment because of his constant criticism of the administration on all their wrongdoing, calling them out. Hence, his decision to stay away from African countries because African countries are alike and rule together. It will be difficult for them to truly administer justice. I will not risk it. Buhari will have to be out of power before I can ever step my foot on African soil. He wrote on Facebook, the Buhari's administration is so shameless. How can a well-known pro Buhari's group openly celebrate an attack on me in New York? It is now clear who was behind it and on a known pro-government newspaper, Daily Times. They, were, they are even warning me to expect worse attack. This is insane. Ordinarily, the Nigerian government and its agencies should be got over a possible attack on a citizen in a foreign nation. They do, they, do they plan to give me the Nandikani's treatment in America? Not possible. Let them know I love traveling. But don't expect me in any African country. As long as the tyrant is in power, I will keep clear. Nandi Kano, the indigenous people of Biafra leader, IPOB separationist group, was recently arrested or kidnapped, if you want to say, from Kenya and forcefully taken to Nigeria under controversial circumstances. The Kenya authority has denied involvement in IPOB leaders' arrest or possible kidnap. Khan is currently in custody of the Department of State Security Services awaiting trials. So this is what our very own brother Muro, Muruno Mukri has said. He said he will not step his foot on any African soil and trust me I don't blame him. He's very correct because if he does I can assure you they will just discuss his matter over tea. They will just, oh, is he your soy? Uh, is there, okay. Uh, please get your boys to pick him. And you can be sure that Africa, there is no recourse to law and order. They treat people like cows. You know, it's a shameful truth, but that's what happens. They don't treat human people like human beings. No, they don't treat them like human beings. They treat human beings like cows. Sad but truth of what is happening currently today. I mean, what happened to Nandi Khan is a clear <laughs> example. For instance, look at what's happening to our very own brother, Chief Sunday Boho. Sunday Boho, um, been a government in the last court uh, hearing, said they looked at the whole case. There was really nothing. Yes? So they said, okay, we're going to carry out investigation. 
No date was fixed for the next court proceedings. No date. No date. Left bl vacant blank. Now, it's been over how many weeks? Has anything been done in that regard? We don't leave things. I mean, if they say we are carrying out investigations, there should be time lag within which we know that this is done. This is how things should be. This is the next phase. It's just sitting there in the prison. And there are indications that, I mean, we had an alleged information that some um, Niger powerful Nigerians are keeping him there. Then we also saw Gumi, we also saw Gumi go to his very hometown, Igboho, you know, that is named after him. We saw, we saw Gumi go there and mentioned himself and Professor Yusuf that um, he's sitting in prison. Uh, he's sitting in prison. They can see that the place is good for cows. Cows are grazing. You know, there's an Islamic... I mean, if you see what they are saying, it's very provocating. These are things that happen in this country. Nobody pays attention. You see, those that should speak are rather not speaking. Very shameful of currents of what is going on in Nigeria, but it's just the true state mm -hmm. of what it is. It is what it is, and that's why everybody needs to rise up and defend the cause of what makes us a people. Because this administration, I mean, sadly came on the back of democracy. But as we speak, it is not democracy. It is oppression. It is over the top, what never should be. What should never occur in a democracy sector, setting is what we are experiencing today. And Nigerians are just watching in disbelief all of these things that are happening in our very eyes. So what do we do? How do we go from here? How do we analyze? How do we look at these things? Clear indication that, you know, it's we need to stand up for what is right. It, it, it might cost us something because, I mean, change is very difficult to administer, especially people are used to it. They are used to extorting, you know, stealing the money and not being questioned. No accountability. And so when you want to put those things in place, they will fight it. They will resist it. You know, great Nelson M Mandela, there is no way the history of Africa will be said without him being mentioned. Oh, he paid for it, I can assure you. 27 years of his life he was in prison just to ensure that South Africa gets what? Gets independence. Did it cost him something? Yes. Even after he came back from prison, we saw it cost him his marriage. But the greater all was for him to serve the people. So it's going to cost us. Speaking out, if that's the least you can do, praying about the country, if that's the least you can do, it goes a long way. Leave us a comment. We'd love to hear from you. Please don't forget to like or share, subscribe. God bless you. Bye for now.